Hey guys, I'm Caitlin Sheffer and today we're going to talk all about paints. It's time for me to make a new paint palette. My old one is getting really used. I've run out a lot of my colors and I'm ready to make a new paint palette. So I thought I'd take you along on my journey. I usually use Winsor & Newton Professional Tube Watercolors, but lately I've been wanting to explore Daniel Smith. I've heard a lot of really good things about them, and I've tried a couple in the past, but this time I wanted to give it a really good go. So I ordered their sample sheets of every single color in their collection. I'm going to show you how I tested each color, narrowed it down to the ones that I wanted to purchase, and how I'm going to use them to create the perfect color palette. I kind of have a tendency to buy lots of products to test them out, and it's not so great on my wallet, but it is great for you because I can really tell you what products are great. I recently purchased, okay, splurge is probably the better word. It's a huge splurge for me, but I love supporting small businesses and I really was excited to purchase a beautiful ceramic palette by Sylvan Clayworks. Now, before I tell you the price tag, I just wanted to say that I really love supporting small businesses and I saved up to purchase this palette. It's beautiful, it's heavy, it's sturdy, and I think it's going to be a really beautiful showpiece on my desk. At least, that's what I tell myself to justify the purchase. After I make my palette, I'm going to take the time to make a color chart. It's kind of a lot of work, but it's really valuable in the long run. It's basically a catalog of every single color mixed with all the other colors, so that when I need to find the exact right shade, of a pink or a blue, I can go reference this chart and find the perfect shade. Plus, I love when I can find unexpected combos that create really beautiful colors. Spoiler alert, indigo, wow. It mixes so beautifully with all the other colors. I love it and I think you will too. Okay, I'm really excited. I've never done an unboxing before and technically it's a padded mailer and not a box but I'm gonna show you my haul from Blick. This little box right here is like $50 worth of paint, maybe more. Professional watercolors ain't cheap, y'all, but they're worth it. I'm so excited. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here's the backstory. I've always bought Winsor & Newton professional watercolor tubes, and I've always loved them, and that hasn't changed. I still love them, and I still highly recommend them, and I still use them all the time. But I'm a curious person, and like I said earlier, I love to try new products. A while back, I ordered Buff Titanium from Daniel Smith, and I love it. So I knew that it was time to try out some of their colors. Now, like I said, these watercolors, they're pretty expensive. They can range from five to $15 a tube. That's kind of a lot when you're building a palette with 24 colors on it. So here's what you can do. You can go on Amazon or Blick and you can order every single color that Daniel Smith offers. So what I did was I added water to each of these dots of paint so that I could get a good idea of what it looked like. Then I went through each page and marked my favorites. After that, I did a few test swatches on some of my favorites to narrow it down even more, and I was obsessed. I couldn't wait a minute longer. I hopped online and I ordered my favorite tubes. Which brings me to these beauties. We're gonna look at all of them and make a really awesome color chart. Okay, remember when I said I love to try new art products? I'm gonna show you all of my palettes. This is the one that I currently use. I've never liked it, I don't recommend it. This one, tiny little baby palette, super cheap. Other palette, very similar, 
but let me show you my new palette that I'm really excited about. This baby is special. It's ceramic, it's super heavy, and it's beautiful. It has all of these wells for different color paints. It has mixing areas, and it even has some little notches to rest your paintbrush on. Now, this was an investment, and it was something that I saved for. This palette was over $200. Now, keep in mind, that price is because it's a small business, it's handmade, it's a more like an heirloom quality palette than just your average everyday palette. This is what I'm going to be building my new palette on today. All right, so these are the new colors that I got, just ordered online. And then these are the professional colors that I already have. Some of them are Daniel Smith, but most of them are Winsor & Newton's professional line. And I'm going to pick my top selections to put on my new palette. My little assistant here, a work at home mom life. A little tricky, but he's a good assistant. I let my paints dry overnight. I recommend that you do that as well because when you work with wet paint, you end up wasting a lot. You really don't need a lot of paint on your brush for it to work with watercolors. When it's wet, you just waste a lot, and that paint ain't cheap. So here are all my paints dried and ready to go. And after I was done, Oh, really? After I finished putting my paints on my palette, I made this little color chart so that I knew exactly what colors I have. My last palette, I totally forgot which colors I ended up using. So even though I had a good guess, I didn't know for certain. And when people would ask me what colors I had on my palette, I really couldn't tell them with confidence. So this time I made a reference chart. Okay, so now I'm ready to make my color chart showing all of my colors and then mixing all of the different possibilities. This is my favorite thing to do when I have new paints. And I think it's a very valuable exercise because like I said earlier, it helps create a catalog for you to use in the future as a reference. Whenever you need to find the perfect color, you can go look at this chart and it will help you quickly find the right color combos. So I have 22 colors on my palette and I'm just going to create really small squares, a, a giant grid, um, because this is the largest paper I have at the moment. So in order to get it to fit, I'm going to keep the squares about one centimeter by one centimeter. Um, but you will just adjust based on how many colors you have. And really there's no wrong, right or wrong way to do this. If you don't want to deal with measuring and making this grid, because it is a little time consuming, Honestly, you can just skip it and kind of create your own grid. That's what I do in my sketchbook because let's be honest, I'm a little impatient when it comes to, to doing that. So like here, I just made my own swatch without measuring the grid and it turned out just fine. 
If you want it to be precise, then go ahead and measure. Otherwise, you can just do your swatches without. I'm gonna go ahead for this exercise and make my grid. And I will show you what it looks like when it's done. So I've created my square and I've made little hatch marks where each line is gonna go so I can line up my ruler and create the lines. My square is 22 by 22. So I will have all of these little tiny squares to make my color swatches. And I've left a space right here so that I can write which color it is. So here I'm gonna start with my first color, which is organic vermilion. So I have the full name here and then on this side, I'm just going to abbreviate with OV and I'll know. So then the next one would be just abbreviated QR, then QP, then OR for opera rose, CO for cadmium orange, LYD for lemon yellow deep, etc. So you'll just fill in the full names on this side and the abbreviations on the top. Well, I had to bust out my calculator because math is not my strong point, <laughs> but 22 by 22 is 484. So I actually just made 484 squares. That's a lot of colors. Um, that's the amount of <clears throat> color combos I can get if I mix each color with every other color. Now, usually I use a round brush and you can totally do that, but I think I want it to be a little more precise. So I'm gonna use my um, square tip flat shader. This is another Princeton um, Heritage line. These are my favorite brushes. I've tried lots of different kinds and I always come back to this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'm going to get this brush wet. I'm gonna come in and get a little bit of this organic vermilion. Make a nice square. Now, what I want you to do, it's okay if you wanna fill in the entire square, but I am actually going to leave some white space around it because I don't really wanna wait for each square to dry before I keep working. And a lot of times if you start on the next squares over and you have it touching every side of the square, it's going to bleed into each other. And I don't want that for this activity. So I'm just going to try and keep a little bit of white space around, around each color. So now I'm rinsing off my brush, gonna wipe it off in between colors getting new fresh water and now I'm gonna come over here, get the second color, put it right here. Okay, my squares are definitely not perfect, but that's okay, this is not an activity that I care too much about being super precise. All right, I'm gonna grab this pink. And before I start mixing the colors with other colors, I'm gonna go ahead and put each of the full values down the line. That will help me mentally keep track of what I'm doing. Here's Opera Rose, which is like a super, super pigmented hot pink color. Look at that. Okay, now I'm gonna be changing over to my orange. So I'm getting my brush really clean. Here we go. Every time I pick up a new color, I make sure to load my brush up really well. 
you want it to be nice and full so that you get a really good idea of what the full color looks like. Now for sap green. This is one of my favorite greens that is straight out of the tube. Most greens I mix with other colors. I feel like sap green looks very realistic just right out of the tube. This one is also really nice right out of the tube under sea green. Some of these are Windsor and Newton and some of these are Daniel Smith. I just couldn't afford to buy every color in Daniel Smith if I already had a similar one in Windsor and Newton. It's just not cost effective. So don't feel like you have to go switch out all of your colors at once. If you have student line of paints, then just slowly switch over, find your favorite ones, order a sample kit, and just change things over slowly. This one right here is one of my favorite colors from my test swatch that I practiced with. This is a Daniel Smith one called Jadeite Genuine. And what's really interesting about this one, it's one of their Primatech paints, which means that it has um, authentic mineral pigments in it. It's really beautiful. If you were gonna get one of the colors that I show today, it would be either Jadeite Genuine or Indigo because they are just stunning. Next up is Cobalt Blue which is a really nice blue color, almost like a royal blue. And then I have Prussian blue. And then we have phthalo turquoise. And here's the one I really wanted to show you, which is this indigo. Next, we have ultramarine violet. And then we're gonna get into more of the earthy browns with burnt umber. Yellow ochre. Burnt sienna. We have raw umber. It's a pretty one, I like, I like raw umber, I use it a lot. Then we have Payne's Gray is like a bluish gray but I love this one and then we have Mars black which is a Windsor and Newton color I actually prefer one of the Daniel Smith Black's better, but I just didn't have it in the budget to switch it out right now, so. And then the last color is one of my favorites, which is Buff Titanium, which is kind of like a creamy beige color, and I use it a lot when I'm painting flowers. So there we have it. We have every single color mapped out on our, on our grid. And next up, we are going to fill in the rest of the colors where we test out every single color combination possible. It's going to be so beautiful. I just wanted to show you how beautiful the indigo dries. And then I also wanted to make note of how some of the colors kind of separate when they dry. So right here, we have undersea green which when you put it down on the paper is blended really well, but when it dries, it kind of separates and leaves this really cool edge. And then this cascade green is made up of a mixture of blues and greens, obviously. And if you can see, it kind of has like this, almost like a goldish green that separates when it dries. 
So that's part of the benefit of creating these color charts is you not only get to see how the colors look, but you get to see how they dry. Here's an example of how they can kind of separate when they dry. Payne's gray is one of my favorite colors and it just looks so beautiful once the colors settle down into the paper. Now that I have all of my colors in a diagonal down the center of my square, it's now time for me to start mixing up my colors. Now it's really easy. All you need to do is follow the intersections. So right now I'm going to see what the organic vermilion looks like when it's mixed with all of these other colors. The first one I'm going to do is quinacridone red and there's two spots where there's an intersection. Quinacridone red and vermilion right here and quinacridone red and organic vermilion right here. So instead of painting the exact same color in both of these boxes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do about 50-50 on this side of the paper and I'm going to do a more watered down version on this side of the paper. So I'll get kind of a ver I'll be able to see a variation in how transparent it can become based on how much water is mixed in with the paints. So this side of the page is going to be more opaque and this side of the page is going to be more transparent because there will be more water mixed in. Let me demonstrate that for you right now. Okay, getting my brush wet, I'm gonna take this organic vermilion and and then pull a little bit of the quinacridone red. I'm gonna mix them together right here. And I'm going to put it right here just like we did before, okay? So that is the full 50-50, half and half. Now I'm gonna grab some of my water and dilute it a little bit more and then I'm going to come down here and see how it looks. Now I probably could have watered that down a little bit more. Alright, so let me show you with the next color. I'm going to do vermilion with the quinacridone pink. And I might be saying that wrong. I really don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, but we're gonna go with quinacridone. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a little bit of water, water it down. Okay. Now I'm going to do the vermilion with opera rose. Make sure you're getting similar amounts of each color on your brush so that you get a true 50-50. So I think you're kind of getting the gist. Do one more. The vermilion with cadmium orange. And again. So I think you can see 
that the colors up here that are more half and half less water are going to be stronger more vibrant shades of the colors and then this side is going to be more transparent more subtle all right i'm just going to keep moving on down the line i've filled in this portion of my chart and i have this much to go and i underestimated how long 484 squares would take to fill but it's been a really educational activity for me to do for a lot of reasons. I'm about to start my color mixing for undersea green, which is abbreviated right here. UG, undersea green, this is the intersection, this is the pure color. So first up, I'm going to mix undersea green with cascade green. That's the intersection right here. I'm gonna do a full 50-50 blend right here then I'm gonna add some water to dilute it and then I'm gonna put another swatch right here. So as you can see, this side of the page is looking a lot more transparent, almost like pastel colors, and these ones are more vibrant and have more pigment in them. Now I wanna show you how I'm speeding up the process because it can be very time consuming to mix every single one of these colors. So let me show you a little shortcut that I have started doing. I'm gonna come up here and grab my undersea green. I'm just gonna get my brush nice and full with undersea green. And then I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 14 colors to mix with undersea green. So I'm just gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna do half, half of the amount and I already have my undersea green ready to go. I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm gonna grab some water. And the first color I need to mix it with is cascade green, which is right next to it on the palette. I'm gonna grab my Cascade Green on my brush and I'm gonna mix it right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it right here in the intersection of those two colors. And I'll grab some water, my brush, dilute it even more, and then come here have the diluted one right there. So it's very helpful to have this catalog of colors so that when you um, are looking for the perfect shade for whatever project you're working on, you can just refer to this chart. But honestly, the value of getting to know your paints is so, so helpful. I know now, you know, which ones are going to separate like this cascade green, it's going to separate a little bit and creates this really beautiful effect. Um, I know that indigo is going to be super dark and pigmented, so I go easy when I load my brush up with paint. I highly recommend that you guys start doing this with your paint palettes, with whatever colors you've got in your studio. Start making color charts, it's so helpful. All right, I'm gonna keep filling in squares.
Well, that's it. We finally finished our color chart. I'm so glad I took the time to do this activity because now I have this incredible resource where I can find any color I need when I'm working on a custom project. I hope you take the time to make a color chart with your paint palettes and I would love to see how they turn out. You can find me on Instagram at Emerald and Ivy Studios. Be sure to hit subscribe so that we can stay in touch and you'll be notified when my next watercolor video tutorial is posted. Thanks for being here.